you again? I thought I told you to get lost. I told you I wouldn't take no for an answer. Well, money usually makes me roll over. But not this time, sister. Well, I have the money. And a bit more to sweeten the pot. No amount of money can get me to take this job. I think you'll change your mind after I've told you what I know. Again, I thought I told you to get lost. I told you I wouldn't take no for an answer. Well, money usually makes me roll over, but not this time, sister. Well, I have the money, and a bit more to sweeten the pot. No amount of money can get me to take this job. I think you'll change your mind after I've told you what I know. Okay, here's a look at our set for our little film noir in iClone. As you can see, uh, the lights have been turned up so we can see what's going on. We've taken down some of the walls. But basically, it's uh, very simple and uh, only build models for what you're going to see. You don't need to build a model or build any detail if you're not going to see it with the camera. And uh, that's what we've got here. Uh, it's just simply a room, and we've got the window. We can look out and see some images of buildings and uh, a hallway, a very simple hallway. Uh, but as I said, I've removed a few of the walls so you can see what's going on. Here's the little film noir scene we just saw with our uh, femme fatale waiting for the private eye to come through the door. I have their uh, exchange and dialogue, and uh, what I would like to do is uh, discover uh, the ideal way to film this scene. Uh, obviously, iClone opens up with a preview camera, one camera. You can have as many as 16 cameras, I believe, in your scene. So uh, we can choose cameras and camera angles to... Uh, help tell this story and it might be better to do it with more than just one camera. I like to use the preview camera uh, as a work camera. If you double click on your object, I like to hit the X key on your keyboard, uh, it allows you then to select that object and notice by using the right mouse button and the uh, mouse wheel you can uh, go uh, around your object if you don't have a mouse wheel, you can hold down both the left and the right mouse button and zoom in and out. But the right mouse wheel will let you spin around your object. It becomes the center of that camera's world, as it were. And uh, using the left mouse button and the right mouse button and the zoom wheel or the buttons in combination, you can move around. So. Uh, Let's back up to the beginning and let's take a look at our scene again and uh, let's figure out where might be a good place to put a camera. I'm going to double click on the Femme Fatale Mary again and uh, let me uh, use that preview camera as what I would like to call maybe a work camera and let me position that camera where I think might be a nice opening shot or one of many opening shots and uh, Let's hit the preview button and then go over here and do an add and notice it adds a camera to our list. We now have two cameras, a preview camera and a camera. So now we can uh, see our scene through this camera. It can remain static or it might be better, obviously, as we can see if the camera moved. So let me hit the uh, space bar and I'm just going to hit X and I'm going to move the uh, mouse with the left mouse and zoom in with the wheel and use the right mouse button to rotate and to pan and uh, that might be a second position so let's hit the uh, stop rewind key and now if we play back notice the camera does a nice little move and uh, reveals 
our characters. And if we want to change uh, how the speed of that uh, dolly move, we can of course bring that camera up in our timeline. And we go down to the camera tab and there we are and hit the transforms and we see two keyframes. And if we want to speed that move up, we can slide that keyframe down a little bit and hit the back key and now it's moving a little faster as we move into our scene. So that camera is doing a nice little dolly move and a push in. There we go, to our scene. Now we can use that shot, and what I typically do is render that shot out as a uh, file, uh, an AVI file, or a uh, Windows Media file, and then edit those files in my nonlinear software, something like Sony Vegas is what I use. Now that's one camera. Uh, notice there is a new feature that is in iClone 5, and it's the uh, mini viewport. And what can happen is, we can have the preview camera and the uh, and, and any other camera playing. And notice we're watching the camera move and we're seeing the preview camera in the mini viewport. You can change the size of the mini viewport and uh, position it wherever you want to on your screen, but it helps you, uh, maybe keeps you from getting lost. You can always see that preview camera or any other camera for that matter in the viewport. So it's a nice, uh, nice new feature. Close that out for now and turn that off. Okay, so that's one camera. Let's go back to our uh, preview camera. Once again, with the X key, I'll zoom back. You notice we now have a representation for a camera right here. That's called camera. You can rename that camera anything you want. Now, uh, let's have maybe another camera for this scene. Let's go in, double click on Mary and then I'm going to move around with my mouse keys left and right and the scroll wheel. Let's zoom in on that cigarette. Deadly cigarette right there and uh, maybe have a shot that starts there and let's slide the slider and let's move by dragging on the screen and moving up to this position here like so. So now like that camera shot back. Ah, we didn't select a new camera. So let's go back to preview, which it was on preview. Okay, we have a camera there. Okay, there we go. Preview camera is on there. And now let's uh, hit preview and add another camera. And now this is called camera zero. And if we slide our slider a little further, we can then move with our mouse and position this camera to reveal another mysterious shot. Now, as you can see, I've turned off all my lights or changed the light settings so they're not as dramatic uh, as they were at the beginning. A little easier to see, and I've removed a lot of the props that we had at the beginning. So that's another camera angle we might want to use. Now, let's go back to preview. Okay, we've got two cameras now we've set up to uh, film our scene. Uh, one's uh, filming the cigarette and one's over the shoulder doing a little dolly move like so. Going to be over her left shoulder. Let's think about adding another camera over Benny's shoulder, our private eye. So let's kind of zoom in here once again with the mouse go over and since we were over her left shoulder uh, one of the rules of editing uh, sometimes you want to follow is we're going to keep that camera on this side camera over there camera right here let's go over his shoulder and I think that's going to work okay once again let's select the preview camera hit the add button and now we've added a camera one and so if we uh, scroll back We'll probably have the door open. We may not use that portion of the shot, but we might use this portion of the shot. And there we go, a nice angle over his shoulder. So uh, you don't have to, of course, render this entire area. You can use the little tick mark controls here and only select the portion of the shot, like right when he walks out and the door closes. That's probably all we'll want to render. And right as he's walking in, is probably all we'll want to render. So we also have 
little control right here that selects the range we're going to render. And there we go. And notice, of course, I did remove my back walls. Those would have to be put back. That was camera one. So let's go back to the preview camera and uh, let's zoom out with the mouse wheel. Once again, it's always good to select an object. I'm going to select this wall here. And that now becomes an area for the camera to rotate around. Here we go to the front. And notice we did have another camera angle where we uh, dollied up, boomed up from the hotel sign to the window. And uh, that might be a nice spot for another camera. So uh, you could position the preview camera once again where you like it. Then bring up the preview camera. Hit the Add button, and now we've added Camera 2. So now, let's slide the slider down. The light flashes, and maybe about there, we can zoom in to our second position for the camera. Like so, and of course, we need to add our back wall and the ceiling. So there's that particular angle. Let's hit Play, and this is a rough idea. The camera booms up, stops. So that's another camera angle. Keep adding camera angles as you find points of interest that help tell the story. And that's all it's about really is the best way to tell the story with what you've got at hand. And you can take a relatively simple set and make it look rather dramatic. And here we are in Sony Vegas, the nonlinear editor that I happen to use. And on the timeline, we can see all of the various cameras that I used in iClone to create the scene. Some I chose not to use, but the beauty of rendering all the different cameras, you can make decisions right here at this point and decide if the shot's appropriate or not. But you've got a lot to choose from, and that's the bottom line.